Hey there, I'm Brian with Storyblocks, and in today's tutorial, A Beginner's Guide to Advanced Tools and Techniques, Part 3 of 4, we're going to take a look at setting up 3D space inside of After Effects. So let's get started. If you haven't uh, downloaded the tutorial, um, I suggest you do. If not, you can follow along, but if you do, this is what it's going to look like when you open it up. You're going to be inside this 3D example. Um, this is where we can practice. I'm going to show you um, what this actually, what you can do um, taking a two-dimensional image. Um, and I took this image here, and I'll play this quickly for you. Um, so I took an image and literally cut out cut out what I thought were the main elements, foreground, middle, background, and so forth. And you can see I took them out and then I just rubber stamped behind um, just to give you a little bit of wiggle room so you can move through um, the three-dimensional environment uh, without seeing any of the uh, Photoshopped background. Um, so you can see there's my components that we're gonna be using. Um, so let me go ahead and close that out. So we're back here. Um, so when you take those elements in any scene, as long as you have a foreground, middle ground, and background element, um, you do have the potential to create it um, as a three-dimensional space inside of After Effects, which is uh, actually really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just play this here. And this is that same uh, image that I'm just, this is just a simple animation of moving forward and slowing down. But you can see uh, the foreground element uh, here. Um, and how it, uh, you know, a, a, a standard in animation is, you know, anything in the foreground is going to move the quickest, the middle ground is going to move a little slower, and anything in the background is going to move the slowest. Uh, almost like when you're driving down the road and you see the trees in front of you, they're moving very fast, but the mountains off in the distance seem like they're not moving at all. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to animate something. Um, just judge based on the distance that you see. Um, obviously, these things are very far away compared to the foreground element here. So... Let's just uh, go in and I can show you how this is set up. Um, so let's go back to the example. Uh, and here you can see um, I've turned on all these layers uh, are three dimensional. If you click the three dimensional uh, icon here. Um, so now they actually have, and I'll show you the difference. If you hit P, uh, this is just your regular position X and Y. And you're basically just moving up and down, left and right. Um, as soon as you add the three dimensional uh, ability, it now can move in Z space, which is forward and backwards. Um, also gives you more orientation buttons, which you know will rotate um, on all axes. So um, yeah, so let's let's just take a look at how we set this scene up. So again, foreground element um, is here. So what we want to do is actually uh, let's go ahead and make a camera before we do anything. So go ahead and hit new, right click new camera we'll just set it up 35 millimeters fine um let's go ahead and hit okay now this will allow us to actually render in 3d space so let's go back again to the foreground element just go ahead and hit p on your on your keyboard and we're going to move this forward so you're gonna uh go to the left maybe let's do uh maybe 1100 um and since you can't see it what you want to do is just kind of bring it back into the element here and then just hit uh, S for a scale. And we're gonna scale this down a little bit so it roughly fits back in where we were here. Maybe a little smaller, like 19. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's just place it in this, this general area here. And then we go to next our mid-ground, um, which is our mountains over here on the left, which are obviously a little closer to this element than the background. So let's just move it down we're going to bring it forward again, so hit P, bring it forward, let's just uh, do maybe minus 500, and then scale it back down roughly so it fits in that general area. This looks about right here, and then we're going to go to our mountains in the background, go ahead and hit P again, and we're going to move this the opposite way. So we're actually going to move this forward, now you can see that the clouds are back there. So let's just do about 20, and then we're gonna go to the clouds. We're gonna hit P again. And we're gonna move these way back. If you hold shift, it'll go even faster. So let's move these to about eh, 1200, it's good. And then hit scale on these guys, and bring the clouds back up. 
and we're going to hit scale on our mountains and kind of bring them back so they fit in here like so now you have that set up you can kind of play with it here and see uh, if you hit C on your keyboard you can track into here with some camera tools and let's see what that looks like so I can see already that off on the distance here we're losing we're completely missing um, this mountain element here because I didn't uh, Photoshop over far enough so let's just uh, hit control Z and move it back so what you want to do is your foreground element here you can do make this a little bit bigger and then slide it back into position here because again it doesn't have to be perfect no one knows what it originally looked like and let's again hit C and see what that looks like looks good I think what we're gonna do is take our mountain back here and we're gonna scale the mountain up to maybe about 45 and we're also gonna move it over to the left and down a little bit all right I think that's gonna work so now what I like to do instead of animating the camera is create a new null object make it 3d as well link your camera to the null and now we can animate this so let's just start with the keyframe here we'll go out to about three and a half seconds and we're going to zoom bring it in and i think that looks good and then you can just go ahead and switch over and then we're going to ease this in just drag it out this will slow it down at the end here I think I know what our problem is with this foreground element I think it's just too close so let's make it about minus maybe 800 there we go and then we're gonna scale it down again a little bit I think that's good so now let's bring this back to see where our position is on this guy and we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, zero on the keyboard we're gonna render this out and there you go So that's the idea. We can also do pretty much anything you can make 3D. So let's just make a new text layer. Let's just call this uh, uh, 3D space. And as soon as I click it to be 3D, it's going to jump into the scene. So there it is. So if we want it to be behind or move with the mountains the mountains are at 20 so let's just keep it right there and maybe shrink it down a little bit and that should just hang out back here with the mountains when we there you go but if we want it up really close to us then you'd want to move the position of this closer to the minus 800 you can shrink it down and this will give you that impression that it's really close to us and it should move right up into the camera there you go so again it's whatever you want but now you know how to do it all right next we'll talk about we'll talk about lighting so we're going to go ahead and create a new comp um, and we'll call this lighting lightning and we'll go ahead and hit ok and all you want to do is create a new solid let's just make it white hit ok and then we're going to right click and do new we're going to do light there's a few different lights there's parallel spot point and ambient uh, spotlight's normally the one you want to use um, the other ones you can but you just have to get used to how they are how they're controlled spotlight's going to be the easiest for you um, so you can go ahead and make the intensity maybe 50 uh, cast shadows shadow darkness this is all fine so let's just hit okay so it's telling you that it's not going to affect this this solid layer until i create it as a three-dimensional layer and now you can see that the light automatically has started to show so if you click on your light you can actually move it in z space backwards which is going to give you more of the light source on the solid layer that we just created if you also click here you can go to a top view and you can actually zoom out and you can see here's our here's our solid here's our light so you can drag in focal point 
and then you can go back to the camera view. You can see what it's doing. So let's go ahead and set up a, uh, let's just put some text in here again. Light source. Let's just bring it into the center. Let's just go ahead and scale it up. And what you want to do is go back to your, this light source needs to be uh, three dimensional. And then we're going to go to our top view again. And you want to just bring your light source forward towards the light a little bit enough that we'll be able to cast a shadow in this area on your uh, background here. Let's just call this background. Let's go back to active camera. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tell, we're going to right click here and you're going to go to material options and you're going to say cast shadows. So now you can see it's casting that shadow. And then you can also say it uh, accepts lights off and then you have your white text. If not, if you keep that on, then it's being lit the same way that your background's being lit by the by the light. So you can just turn that off if you just want white text. So you can see that the uh, the um, shadow back there is pretty intense. So you can, as you move your text back, I'm gonna try to find that more natural location closer to the wall. That looks good. So then we can actually go into the light itself and we can go to the light options and we can change the darkness of the shadow to maybe 25% and then the diffusion to maybe 90 and it's gonna give you a softer looking shadow. So, so I think that's gonna be it for today. Uh, this again was just a quick tutorial on 3D space and uh, 3D lighting. Um, again, as you test and you know work on your own projects, you'll be able to uh, figure out a lot more but stay tuned for the next uh, tutorial and thanks and have a good one